Hi folks, I'm Florian from iProcess. Today we talk about real end-to-end -end test automation. Real test automation does not only handle execution of a test. The whole system is triggered by a code commit of a developer and ends with a rating of your system and software readiness, all without human involvement. Components for the test automation are similar, no matter on the integration level the test is executed and what tools are used. The general architecture of your test system is always based on four groups – prepare, execute, evaluate and report. This is true no matter if you run your test manually, in a semi-automated way or fully integrated test automation. The difference is that more or less all of these activities are performed by a human. Let's start with the first group – prepare. And within this group we look at the first step – the trigger. The trigger is the entry point for an automated test environment. Many systems are using a human that could be an engineer or a technician to trigger a test. By doing this, the architecture already failed in being an end-to-end -end automated system. The trigger has to be generated automatically by the availability of new software to test. A proven way to achieve this is to use a message broker, an intermediary computer program module that facilitates communication from the built machine to all test systems. There are many message broker software options available, off the shelf and open source with the natural advantages and disadvantages of the respective option. Now let's look at the second step, patch. Before a test system starts further steps, it needs to fetch the software artifacts. The trigger message we just discussed has to carry important information about the software to test. The branch, a unique identifier or hash, parameters for the configuration and ideally the change content. This information is essential for two reasons. In multi-configuration systems there might be only some configurations requiring a regression test. And software versions might have different priority for test execution depending on their branch. The fetch step is collecting the artifact from the repository under consideration of the information above and provides them to the test system. Now the scheduling. The scheduling of a test execution is essential and has to use a smart algorithm in order to avoid clogging the pipeline. It has proven useful to have some sort of importance tag on every software package so versions closer to their release or even hot fixes can move up in the priority in the schedule and will get tested sooner. If you are running a CI system that likely compiles more software packages and the test system can digest. It is also handy to agree on a time window for scheduling test runs. For example, every test level fetches the build at midnight and more if there is time. Like this, consistent coverage between different integration levels can be assured. Next we have to book a resource. Booking a test resource is securing two important things. The resource is available for the test run and the resource is also not going to be interrupted. It has proven a good idea to use the very same booking tool for maintenance and upgrade tasks performed by engineers or technicians so the automated test system is not launching a new execution while the system is under service. There are a few tools out there that help with this step. You can pick what works with your requirements regarding look and feel and of course budget. Just make sure it has a decent API and a simple UI. Alright, by now your test system has received word that there is new software to validate. It fetched the artifacts, got a run scheduled and the DUT reserved. Now comes the big part of test automation, the update. Depending on how sophisticated your product is, you might be able to just trigger the built-in OTA update feature and the DUT is ready to go. If you do not have such a feature, or maybe not yet, you have to build one within your test system. OTA or wired does not matter too much, as long as it can digest the information regarding version, DUT selection, etc. from the previous steps. Also, do not forget to account the update time when scheduling your test run. The configuration of the test system and the DUT is the last step of preparation before you move over to the execution. If you are running different product configurations on the same hardware, such as country coding for example, now is the time to set that up. The communication channel used here is usually the same as you would use as a human engineer, minus the GUI. You can use the same tool backend through the API. This concludes the preparation part. And as we walk through it, you likely realize that it is the one with the most steps. It comes as no surprise a good test preparation is adding a high value to your test system and is essential for a smooth and automated test execution. 
Needless to say that all of the listed steps above have to be fully automated in order to achieve a real end-to-end -end test automation. Let's check on the second group now, execution. Before you can have your test system starting the actual sequencing, your test parameters have to be set. The test system is setting the parameters for the execution based on several inputs, DUT configuration, test goals, etc. Parameters are added into the test execution script or sequence and determine the output. While some parameters define a certain test step is executed or not, during this run, others are responsible for the repetition rate and the level of coverage, depending on the goals set for this run. That being said, the parameters differ strongly, depending if your test system is running a quick regression test or a complex validation cycle, and they naturally influence the runtime of the execution. Now we reach the step most engineers are associating with test automation, sequencing. There are many options available to sequence through your test cases. You can use commercial off-the-shelf tools, there's also a great variety of open source solutions, or you can design your own sequencer. The equation is pretty much flexibility versus cost. Off-the-shelf solutions are offering a well-designed yet clearly defined set of features and come at a certain cost, while in-house developments are very flexible and lean, but will consume engineering resources. In the end, it is a decision that has to fit your needs. But whatever you're going with, make sure that your solution fits the needs of an end-to-end -end test automation. After your test system has concluded the sequencing of your test cases, resetting the system and the DUT is a very important yet neglected step. Since your system is running fully automated, it might test different maturity levels of software and different configurations as well. It is essential to bring it back to a mint condition state at the end. Since different test cases can leave a DUT in different conditions and the following execution cannot know these, it is highly recommended to reset the system at the end of a test, not at the beginning. Also, keep in mind that your test case might not pass and leave the DUT in a false state, which has to be cleared for the next execution to start from a known state. So here's a quick summary of the execution component. Though most people see automated sequencing of a test case as the main or even the only component of test automation, as you can see it's only one link in a long chain that brings you real end-to-end -end test automation. Okay, so in order to start the evaluation of your test result data, you first have to read it from your test system. There's a variety of options for data reading available to integrate into your test system. If you're using a commercial off-the-shelf test execution solution, it is a good idea to check for the data reading devices your supplier provides. Test execution solution providers are getting more and more open to modular approaches, so, so it is worthwhile to check for third-party integrations as well. The same applies if you run in-house test execution systems. Always make sure that you have well-defined and compatible interfaces designed into your system. Once you have successfully harvested the data of your test system, you have to apply signal conditioning. While a human test engineer will immediately spot an outlier, judge and dismiss it, an automated system needs some filtering. Also, depending on your setup, your measurement data might be noisy, so a clear signal cannot immediately be evaluated. Moving averages and low-pass filters are common practices and should be applied. Depending on DOT and test scope, of course, you do not want to filter out important data. Here comes the part that makes your system extremely powerful, learning. You can utilize machine learning technology to create a test system that improves every day. Paired with continuous test execution, it helps you to recognize output drifts and performance issues early in the development and way before your customer sees them. You do not have to go all in on complicated deep learning neural network though. Some simple algorithms and some attention to data that is not directly part of the original observation can already bring your system to another level. Judging test results based on collected test data from your DUT is completing the evaluation capabilities of your test system. The accuracy of the data acquisition may create a pitfall here and can lead to failing tests. In many cases, the accuracy is only a perceived accuracy rather than the real one. For that matter, your judging algorithm has to look for the results within a window by applying tolerances to the expected values. Make sure you know those tolerances in your measurement chain and set your windows accordingly. And also keep the resolution of the measurements within a reasonable scale. So here's a quick summary of the evaluate component. 
As we discussed, evaluation of test result is more complex than just comparing two numbers. A great data reading setup is setting you up for a reliable and effective result evaluation. Making sure that the data is machine readable through the conditioning and filtering helps to avoid false trips of your automated tests. And teaching your test system how to learn and improve will create a reliable and increasingly effective test data judgment, lifting your test systems to new levels. And last but not least, consolidation of test results and visualization. Many big companies are putting a lot of money, resources and effort into their tests and test automation, but they are missing this one step. The component test results are not shared or compared with the system or vehicle results. Like this, they are creating separate test islands on a respective integration level. Naturally, there are some gaps in any test coverage and by consolidating results, from all levels, you can quickly spot overlaps and common gaps and assign resources to work on those. A good test results consolidation not only gives you or your management team a quick at-a-glance overview, it also can help to prevent loss of testing time in case of showstopper immersion on any level. Finally, test results do not have a big value without visualization. Visualization does not urgently mean to represent them in a graphical way. One option is to visualize results within your requirement documentation. Depending on the complexity of your product, it might get rather complicated to get a quick overview with this method though. A proven option is to create a very high level visualization, basically giving a release recommendation. This could look like a traffic light, for example. So here's the summary. As we discussed, end-to-end -end test automation is far more than just automated test execution. The chain that has to be in place for a successful test machine has to be complete and fully integrated. Many tasks have to be executed in preparation and aftermath of the test execution in order to have an effective and efficient test system. This starts already with the test trigger. While lower integration levels use this almost everywhere, when it getting closer to a system or vehicle, it is a rare sight in the industry. Also, many test manager tasks such as scheduling and DUT booking are still in human hands, though could be integrated in the automation. Automating these preparation tasks all the way to useful consolidated result presentation can become a very powerful tool in your organization to reduce the issues shipped to your customer and to reduce the release time from weeks to hours thanks to continuous validation. iProcess provides consulting and training as well as strategy and process assistance to help your company reach the next level of excellence, no matter if you're just getting started or if the time has come to overhaul your existing systems.